This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More about them at the end of the video. It's 1.23 a.m. and I'm about to show you a color that doesn't exist. Or rather, it exists, but only five people in the world have actually seen it. Most people will never get the chance to see it in their entire lives. And no, this isn't a clickbait video, or just a video where I talk to you about a color that you haven't seen before. In this video, I am going to legitimately attempt to show you a color that you have never seen before. Because today, we're talking about Olo. So if you haven't heard, back in April, scientists reported they had discovered a new color, a color known as Olo. And chances are, if you've heard of it, you've probably seen it depicted as this color. Only this color is obviously not Olo for two reasons. Number one, you probably know what teal is. This is teal. You would especially know it if you are a fan of the 90s or Phineas and Ferb. But secondly, and perhaps much more importantly, it's because you physically can't see Olo, at least not in the traditional sense. But I promise I didn't clickbait you. Just hear me out, because although we can't see it in exactly the same way that the scientists did, we can get pretty dang close. And you can get ridiculously close and perceive the experience of Olo using science and basic color theory. Let me explain a little bit more. Olo is something called an impossible color, much like self-luminous red or hyperbolic orange, which, while they sound like AI paint swatches, are actually real visual phenomena that we classify as colors, which are not the same as real colors, but also they kind of are still colors. And if you think that's confusing, wait until I tell you that technically color does not exist at all in the strictest sense of the word. Objects do not have color. Instead, they reflect, absorb, and emit light waves, which are picked up by the photoreceptors in our eyes and sent to our brain, which constructs the perception of a color. Color is therefore more something that we perceive and experience than something that actually physically exists. It's also worth saying that color is subjective. We don't really have a way to know if you and the person next to you are seeing the exact same color, even if you're labeling it exactly the same and pointing out the same color on the color wheel, because we really don't know if the yellow that you're seeing is exactly the same yellow that someone else is seeing. We assume that it is, because in theory, your eyes should be picking up on the same wavelengths of light, and your brain should be interpreting them in roughly the same way, but we really just don't have any way to know for sure if our color experiences are exactly what other people's are, because you can't really crawl into someone else's brain and see through their eyes. At least not yet. Now, back to Olo. So Olo is something specific in the realm of impossible colors called an imaginary color. Think of it like this. If this is our visible spectrum of light that we can see, so we have like red, green, and blue, Olo is right here. So it's kind of like we're dealing with a crappy paint set. We have like the, the dollar store red, yellow, and blue. If you've never tried to do this, if you have just some cheap primary colors, you cannot mix a neon purple. It just, it won't happen. You can try really hard, but it's not happening. Olo is kind of like that, but with our eyes. Because the way that you see color is through cells called cones in your eyes. And these cones are grouped together. So we have red, green, and blue cones, and they're all kind of like scattered in one area. So, no matter what color you're receiving, all of those cones are firing at least a little bit at the same time. So it's kind of like, if you're going back to that crappy paint analogy, imagine that you are mixing a green, but every green that you mix, you have to have a tiny bit of red thrown in. If you're mixing color that way, you're never going to get the most saturated green that you possibly can, because there's gonna be a little bit of red in it. But the way that the scientists got around this, and how they actually discovered discovered Olo was something that they called Oz, or the Oz Vision Experiment. Now, the way that this experiment worked was that they actually mapped out a couple of individuals' very specific way that the cones were arranged in their individual eyes, and then they were able to use a specialized group of lasers to activate only the 
M cones in these people's eyes. Another thing about eye cones, if you're not familiar, they come in three variations. M, L, and S. S stands for short, and it sees blue light. M stands for medium, and it sees green light. Red stands for long, and these cones see red light. By being able to stimulate only the M cones in people's eyes, they were able to create a visual experience that people had never been able to do before because there's always this sense of cross-contamination with all of the different cones in your eyes when you're just seeing things day to day. And this color that people saw when only the M cones were activated in their eyes we call Olo. So, uh, how the heck do we see it? Well, it's a little bit of a trick. You may have noticed, but I do not have you presently in the room with me right now. And I also don't have a highly sophisticated set of little lasers that I'm going to shine in your eye. <laughs> I also don't have your retina mapped out. I don't have a lot of the things that the scientists used to try and simulate this color. But what I do have is a visual phenomenon known as the after image. See, if we're going off of the hypothesis that in order to see Olo, you need to be seeing things pretty much only with your M cones, there's actually a way that we can simulate that on a lesser level using a visual trick called an after image. And you've probably seen it with pictures of the American flag, but it's inverted. But if you stare at it for 30 seconds and then you look at a white wall, then like, boom, it's the American flag. Whoa, that's crazy. But the thing is, is that we can also use it to simulate colors that don't exist usually. And uh, Olo, I think, is a great example of this. The way that we do this is by actually overstimulating the other cones in the eyes. Basically, we're going to make the other two kinds of cones in your eyes absolutely exhausted. Because when two kinds of cones are overstimulated and then they return to normal light conditions, they become temporarily fatigued. They become less responsive. And that leaves the cone that's left behind to become over-responsive and kind of step up in comparison, which then the brain interprets as a kind of negative, a complementary color, an after image. And this is because when you are seeing things, you're actually using up things called photochemicals. That's how your cones are seeing these colors. But when you are focusing really hard on one specific color, it causes these photochemicals to deplete a little bit faster than they can regenerate, and that causes the other one to become over active, etc, etc. But let's get into the actual process of trying to simulate this with Olo. Full disclosure, this is not going to be quite as saturated as Olo, because once again, I don't have a bunch of lasers. But we can get a color that is an approximation, a slightly less saturated version of Olo that is still much more saturated than you can usually see in your typical day-to-day -day life, which I think is still interesting. So let's get to the experiment, shall we? So the first step, if possible, is to watch this video in near darkness. Now, if you aren't somewhere where you can get access to some sort of dark or dimly lit space, that's totally fine. It'll still work and it'll be cool, but if you really want the full effect, then I would recommend doing this in a dim or dark room. Okay, so the next thing is if you're like me and you tend to get dry eyes, you may want to get some eye drops after this because your eyes might get a little bit dry because we're going to be doing a sort of staring contest with your phone screen for a minute here. And the next thing that I will need you to do is extraordinarily easy. You will need to stare at the center of this image for 60 seconds seconds straight. If you can, try and maintain complete focus and do not blink. But especially try not to blink in the last, like, 30 seconds of this. This is going to absolutely freaking exhaust some of the cone cells in your eyes. And what that is going to do is it's going to make the other cone cells a little bit overactive when we flip to the next color. And if you're lucky, for just a few milliseconds, you may see an approximation that is much, much brighter than usual. Let's see if this works. You can tell me in the comments if you feel like this worked for you and if you saw a much brighter color than you usually would see. And if this didn't work at all for you, 
uh, also let me know in the comments. But without further ado, let's see if we can see some Olo, or at least an approximation of Olo. So, did you see it? A crazy, magical, kind of psychedelic, extremely bright teal that's way brighter than anything you've seen before? Congratulations, you may have seen a tiny, tiny percentage of what they're calling Olo. Or at least the closest that we're going to get to it as uh, lay people. So why the heck does this matter? In fact, why does the discovery of Olo matter at all? It really is just an incredibly ridiculously vibrant teal, right? Actually, it has a lot of really important medical applications, a lot of eye conditions that affect people's sight and lead to them having limited or less vision have to do with the degeneration of cones. In fact, that's actually how color blindness works, is that often one kind of cone is defective, it doesn't work. So if we can come to a greater understanding of how to manipulate individual cones, then it may allow people who had previously had a very limited range of color in their sight be allowed to perceive a much wider range of color, as well as hopefully increase the quality of life for those living with certain conditions that are often acquired in old age that cause the degeneration of these cone cells and the degeneration of their sight. Let's be completely honest, the other application here is that it's just incredibly cool to be able to see colors that we haven't seen before. It can help us understand the world around us better, the ecology around us. There are so many animals out there that have a much wider range of sight than us. Birds, mantis shrimp, insects. A lot of animals have a lot more cones and kind of cones than we do. So if we can expand our range of visible sight, then it can help us to understand how they view the world. And that can do a lot in terms of understanding those species better. Finally, it's, it's just cool. I want to be able to see like a mantis shrimp. That sounds sick. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to my patrons and stick around for a little bit of bonus cat footage while I talk about the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. So listen, staring at a screen can get exhausting even when you aren't frying your brain trying to see imaginary colors. That's why I'm glad that our sponsorship for this video is Squarespace. Oh, did you have a sneeze? because they make it so you can stop spending so much dang time staring at a computer trying to figure out how the heck to build a website and spend way more time designing your next big project or philosophizing about cats. Their new design intelligence tool also, whoop, he done. Their new design intelligence tool also helps you polish your layout and color scheme. And while you can't make it with imaginary colors, you do get to customize pretty much every feature of the website to make it truly yours. And when you're ready to sell things off of your website, if you're into that, Squarespace Payments handles everything. So you can focus on what you're really passionate about. So head to squarespace.com slash brushwithbecca for a free trial and use code abrushwithbecca to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now go make Make your imaginary websites real. See you in the next video. Bye. Tio, do you want to say hello? Oh, you're so big. You're such a big boy. Do you want to say hello? He does not. He does not like to be held. If you're wondering why, it's mostly Tybalt in these videos. Our other cats do not like being held very much, but Tybalt loves being held. Hey, do you like my shirt?